Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live here from our paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. This show is dedicated to finding out ways for human humane architecture, basically meaning being a planet and people friendly here on the island. And so um, we're going to talk about how we're going to do that. And we like to dream wild, but also every once in a while you got to face reality and do a reality check. But for that, you need very sort of open minded, visionary people who are grounded, but as well have visions. And we have one of them here today, one of the big thinkers, and that's uh, Socrates uh, Bertakos. So thank you very much for being here. Well, Martin, thank you for having me on the show today. It's a pleasure. It. So can you talk a little bit about yourself and your background? Okay, um, Martin, I'm a assistant fire chief in the Honolulu Fire Department, and I'm the administrator of the fire prevention mm -hmm. for the, over the city and county of Honolulu mm -hmm. and over the training and research, which is a training for all of 1,200 or so firefighters that we have in the Honolulu Fire Department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been in the fire department just short of 31 years, mm -hmm. and I've been involved in uh, fire prevention, codes, etc. for about the last 10 or so. All right. And I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you, thank you. We're happy to have you and what you just said, the Building Code Council meeting, that's actually how we met and we can get the next picture mm -hmm. of the first picture. Uh, this gentleman here got us together, uh, that's our um, uh, colleague showmaster Howard Wig, who's running the Code Green show here, excellent show guys, you got to check that out. And Howard uh, basically got us together in one of the Building Code Council meetings. That's, uh, that's true, Howard's a a uh, great, great colleague and a friend, um, and I served on the State Building Code Council for eight years. Mm -hmm. Howard came on, I think, a little while after me, uh, so I even got to chair that mm -hmm. for a year, and um, I timed out, but I go to the meetings every once in mm -hmm. a while, and mm -hmm. I stay in touch with the folks there, mm -hmm. and with Howard as mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. It's a great place to learn about all the different factors that go into into building, including building, plumbing, electricity, yeah, yeah. energy, and fire safety. And, and I was surprised positively if we can get the next picture. Usually, to be honest, architects are afraid of people like you guys because we have these crazy ideas and you guys just shut us down and you say, you have to say, sorry, that doesn't work because of life safety, because of code. Not so much in this case. We actually, in a meeting, uh, we were questioning things and not just agenda items so and so all approved. We were critically looking at something that is actually, the some consider that me including as the root of all many problems we'll have is something invasive. That's the IBC, the International Building Code, which is made for the mainland. And so in one of the meetings we were talking about this and talking about that due to the mainland code, the fire escape stairs have to be enclosed, which on the mainland New York City, if there's a fire in your building and you try to get your the hell out of there and then you break your neck on an over ice metal grating of an exterior fire stairs, that's a problem. But that ice thing we don't have here. So, mm -hmm. right? Well, you don't have that here. And so the International Building Code, like, you know, most of the other codes is a consensus standard that covers the whole country. Well, We've got different geography, different, different weather, different cultures, and it's also supposed to be adapted, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. we would say a, a code amended for the uh, different locales. And Hawaii is quite mm -hmm. a bit different, and mm -hmm. so is Honolulu, and mm -hmm. we think that an outside stairs is good. After mm -hmm. all, the idea is to go to a safe place where you're separated from fire and smoke, and you can breathe and make mm -hmm. your way mm -hmm. all the way down to the ground. And mm -hmm. there's more than one way to, mm -hmm. to achieve that. You don't have to completely close up that exactly. space. In fact, a little wind coming in, air going out is a good thing. That's perfect. And can we break that picture number two, which uh, I took that on my way to work. Uh, this, so we bring them back because we actually had, until mid-century, we had these pretty, you know, Fascinating. They're so fascinating that uh, De Soto and I are going to do an entire show about these easy breezy exterior staircases that have been, you know, from a, from a building um, sort of art point of view, they're, they're very spectacular and 
sort of ascending and descending in a building, not to speak about the health uh, effects, you know, that it has on your body. When you, you, when you like to walk the stairs, you know, it keeps you in shape. And all these aspects, they all play into each other. And that's what we, we come from different angles. Mm -hmm. So the head of the DPP at that time, also being in the meeting, you know, was convinced and basically said, okay, let's basically adjust code. And uh, next picture is another uh, example. He was almost close because we keep talking about fixed glazing and being making buildings hermetic. And he said, I get you guys and maybe should, we should penalize fixed glazing, but then he realized he went too far, and, but we said, oh, this is, you know, you should write this down, we should record it, but the sheer fact that he said that means it's on our minds, and maybe the change is coming, and you would be very happy if you wouldn't have to deal with that sort of fixed glazing, right? Well, we think that might be another hazard, and really air, air flow is good if there's a protection, so I notice in that building, those stairs went up, so it was a safe way down, mm -hmm. but the exterior walkway was an overhang, and that, mm -hmm. that prevents fire from going up, which it wants to do, mm -hmm. and go in the next window. Mm -hmm. That means you can have windows that are yeah. more open yeah. in, in that unit. And that's a good thing in a place where the weather's good and the trade winds are blowing, right? As it's yeah. here. And that's next picture, which is also a permanent background picture, is pretty much a project that the audience has seen a couple of times, and you were... Uh, on the on the final review, right? Uh, yeah, I, that was fun going to your class, and my wife came along with me. Really, we were impressed by the uh, architectural doctoral students and the project they mm -hmm. uh, they put together, and they were doing some real out of the box uh, thinking. They were thinking about what it means to live in Hawaii, how our community could be like. I, I was pleased to see um, mm -hmm. that kind of thinking coming out and. And because I'm a fire chief, I, I did point out some practical concerns they might yeah. want to keep in mind. And which you know. we actually want to share with the audience now, if you can get the best picture, or the next picture. Uh, this is illustrating sort of what you were talking about. And we see the staircase here being at the very edge of the building. So similar to what we talked before. We see gray, which is concrete, which is a, problem, which is a product you like because it's non-combustible. And, but there's some there's some brown stuff there, and that's sort of stereotypically uh, something that you know people of of your uh, um, sort of obligation are sort of skeptical about, because that's pretty much um, wood. But um, before we get there, next bring the next picture because tall buildings, you know, are are iffy, and the students were thinking about how to evacuate the building. And they came up with this. You want to explain what that device is they found out? I think they've got something that's a backpack that's anchored to uh, some secure point in the wall and mm -hmm. uh, lets you to come, uh, lets you come out, you know. And other countries have got chutes and uh, mm -hmm. lines that let you come out and ladders. And, and to be perfectly honest, firefighters would rather you just go to the closest stairs and mm -hmm. go out. But, but sometimes that might not be available, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's another option. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was fun to see the kids thinking of different yeah. things. Yeah, and just provide, you know, more options, because the more options you are, the less trapped you are, because once the staircase is clocked for whatever reason or fails in parts, you want to have different means of and ways of egress out of the building. The next picture is showing, um, you know, uh, what I really appreciate about you is the sort of holistic thinking you have. You're not just thinking about your field, but you're thinking, you know, have the big picture. And you were interested in, 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 in live on a smaller, uh, you know, footprint, things like that. And, and, and here we got uh, the material of wood, uh, which is usually from a fire preventive point of view. You know, it's like, okay, wood can light up and so basically it catch fire. So it's, it's to be considered you know, problematic. But again, you have a different view. You have a more reflected, more progressive view, right? Well, uh, wood does burn, but when it's heavier structure or heavier timbers, it tends to char and then still keep its integrity. Mm -hmm. Where engineered lumber that's used these days or even steel trusses does not or mm -hmm. will fail mm -hmm. they'll fail quickly in a fire so we're not necessarily against wood for structural uh, members mm -hmm. we say that it should be designed exactly. uh, properly uh -huh. and mm -hmm. and really it's the things the stuff that we all have as people mm -hmm. and that's exactly. that's the things that that burn absolutely and, uh, and, yeah and we need to keep a little better yeah, control yeah, of yeah. 
And the next picture is uh, the students, you know, taking this to their heart and proposing actually the partition walls of the units out of, uh, not out of concrete because that would have been too heavy and too sort of concretey. They looked into like what kind of wood we have abundant and available being albicia or eucalyptus and basically sort of cross um, uh, composing that, I say at this point, and, and you, get, you get a better fighter rating sometimes for sure than with steel, which I always compare to spaghetti, which is pretty sturdy before it's cooked, before it's boiled. But once you throw it into the boiling pot, it basically has no structural integrity anymore, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, typically what we see is CMU or drywall yeah. between units, mm -hmm. and we're gonna go over that a little bit later. So CMU's got a stronger fire mm -hmm. rating mm -hmm. than does drywall. I'm not sure what the wood is, mm -hmm. but I can tell you it's better than some kind of lesser material. Well, and, and I can tell because the next picture shows a project that I've been doing so many years ago, which was a school for mentally disabled children. So these are the most problematic to basically evacuate, right, mm -hmm. per se. And this was a 40,000 square foot school that we basically, after a long consideration of getting to know handicapped people, we said we can't build the usual you know, drywalled way that is so cold and so neutral. It needs to be, you know, haptical and tactile and touching them literally and figuratively. So we proposed to make it out of solid timber and our public German clients stared at us with eyes wide open, say, you guys are nuts. You probably need more treatment than the kids. And we said, uh, let's make our case. And we got the most uh, renowned uh, German uh, fire rating uh, consultant, Dr. Huss, involved. And we basically convinced the client, and here's the project, you know, widely published. And because the fire rating of these uh, solid uh, timber walls and ceilings, you know, surpass conventional construction. And we have to say, in all honesty, it's a one story building. It has lots of courtyards. So you got basically doors to the outside, plenty. And so you need to look at each project sort of individually and then judge. With, in that case, the effect that what we wouldn't claim here and couldn't expect for a high rise, but up there, we have no sprinkling in the building at all. We have smoke detectors. We have a two parts partition doors that close to uh, basically prevent the smoke from entering one section uh, to the other one. But that's pretty much it. Through a similar you know, uh, dialogue we have, which you call, call integrated project delivery, where you bring all the people involved at the table at the very beginning and talk very openly and honestly about things and, and create trust in each other, you know, and, and say together we can make that even though it might be not be conventional because um, you're very progressive and think about the future, your own children and, you know, and how do we move on and evolve on the island than getting stuck and basically just sort of um, are sort of, you know, behind ourselves. We need to get ahead of ourselves and, and try to bring the future to us as soon um, as we can. So yeah, we want to... Sometimes we need to bring the past to us because there are so good true. ideas that we haven't used that's so for true. a while. That's and th so there's true. many ways to make a building safer yeah. from, uh, from making sure you have more ways out mm -hmm. to keeping them maybe not as tall and yeah, yeah. No, and exactly. Et cetera. Right? And talking, you know, one story buildings, if the camera can get that big piece that you probably have seen on the table already. This is some research. Uh, this is a DRC project by uh, Nick Civitano. Hi, Nick. I hope you're doing well. That he proposed for single family residences. We're holding it up because this is basically uh, the uh, a detail of the, of the roof structure where you basically cross um, uh, compose boards of local wood. And at the beginning of that time, I was sharing with him uh, a product uh, that's by a German uh, company, Hundegger, who were basically having like a, a robot table and that, that robot was basically nailing them because originally it was cross laminated, but laminated is glue and we don't like glue mm -hmm. uh, because in case of a fire, it, it burns toxic and you know you get you know not clean burning material but all these composites are potentially hazardous and they're off right? gassing all the time exactly really, so. so try to avoid that and so the, the aluminum nails were the first step uh, why aluminum because you can still cut openings into it with a wood saw but it's still a foreign material so the actual stuff we're using now is uh, a company here uh, uh, back fasteners who makes this lignol lock and Lignol Lock is a, is a, wood, a beech wood dowel that has no thread. 
And so uh, you, you put it in with a shooting gun and um, it's basically going to be glued to the wood without glue through what you call friction welding. If you take your hands and you rub them really you know, fast, you create heat. And if you do this to an extreme extent, you basically uh, weld the lignin and the wood together. So we would do that. And so on top of that, we would have um, a water membrane and then a batten and then horizontal boards, which purpose is only to prevent the membrane from getting hit by UV. So it basically improves the longevity of the roof. So as a result, you get basically a, a, an all solid roof that's out of one material that, if it's thick enough, basically is gonna is gonna last as in that school, you know, 90 minutes or 110 mm -hmm. minutes. And this is uh, sitting on some properly sized rafters, I guess. Um, actually, here that was intended to be a, a solid slab, so it's wow. structural. So okay. you wouldn't have. I mean, you have you a solid slab. You don't even need rafters. Yeah. And so, um, and we're thinking, I mean, Nick actually came from this meets your comprehensive thinking because I was impressed when you started talking about your own family and you taking care of their health and saying, you know, health, healthiness, not in case of only a fire uh, where you don't want them to inhale all this toxic lemonade stuff, but also in case of when there's not a fire, which we hope will be the forever case, right? And this is where Nick come from. Nick basically came from uh, from a tragic family uh, experience where uh, a close family member got sick, uh, that he said, I want to make a building that keeps my family healthy. So it's this sort of mm -hmm. comprehensive thinking that that life safety isn't just you know, preventing people from getting killed, but it's also, you know, keeping you know, people healthy to begin uh, with. You know, our house, we have a little house in the country, but we have a lot of windows and the wind, the wind and the light comes through. We have bamboo floors and mm -hmm. we have... Uh, solid uh, wood, and we have a nice garden with uh, fruits and vegetables outside, and uh, we think those are some pretty important features of life for being healthy. You know, exactly, sort of, and that's yeah. that comprehensive thinking I love so much about you. And the next picture is uh, looking at that Project Primitiva from the outside, and um, so what is basically the bare bones is the naked structure that you see and it's basically these uh, very industrial uh, twin T's, double T's that you use for parking garages at Walmart and at Home Depot and at Costco. And we flip them. And so if you can get the next picture, the little detail on the left is showing that due to that, basically the, um, the flange is, is projecting out and then pushed back is the web. So the fire is basically have to crawl around it. And you say this is perfect because it prevents by nature of the tectonics, the vertical fire spread. Yeah, it's good. Whenever there's a overhang, a walkway or an eyebrow, that is mm -hmm. gonna prevent mm -hmm. vertical fire spread. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. On the exterior. Yeah. Exactly. So um, the, the next picture is because we, I wish we wouldn't have to show it, but we have to show it because there was a recent very tragic um, event here, which was the Marco Polo building basically on fire that I know you guys were and are still struggling with and uh, with sort of saying for new buildings, you know, uh, fire sprinklers have to be installed. But also to me sort of encouraging is that you say also don't do uh, hermetic enclosed hallways and trapped spaces because that is mm. trapping us and trapping people, right? Well, we, we, we did tell the city council when they asked us to prioritize the building, we just said the taller the building is mm -hmm. and the more units it has per floor with an enclosed corridor mm -hmm. throughout the building, those are gonna be uh, uh, risk factors mm -hmm. really. And now you've got to overcome that with uh, compartmentation of materials or fire protection mm -hmm. and notification systems and a good uh, safe egress path. Yep. and. It's not easy to do all those mm -hmm, things, mm -hmm. and it gets expensive to mm -hmm. them. But you make it easy for the people, which with a great innovation that we're going to close the show with. But before that, we want to keep dreaming for a little while longer. And the next picture is an element that we all know that's so abundant here and that you guys love, which is water, because usually you put out fire with water. And so uh, the next Primitiva project that you're part of um, is the next picture. We call it... Well, the curtain wall, we have a problem because it's glazed, but what about a water curtain wall? And of course we come from a poetic angle, as we were saying, you know, if you cut out the poetics, it's not a building, right? So 
a waterfall here in Hawaii or my partner Suzanne way back in Brazil in a waterfall. She's the muse and inspiration of the project. And so the next picture also pragmatics informed the project, which way back on the expo in 2000 in my hometown, the whole main screen where they're projected on was a water curtain wall. Where the landscape mm, architect that's top, cool. <laughs> top right picture is the World Trade Center Memorial recently opened and uh, the goal was to make it look like Niagara Falls but use the least amount of water and they got it accomplished. And last but not at all least down there um, in, uh, in, in uh, San Francisco, the Embarcadero Center has a water feature where the pool overflows and it gives this totally clear and crystal um, you know, water screen that you think it's glass, which I checked out with Nathan Toothman, our uh, hero with his elevate structure. So next picture and, and last picture of that sequence, hopefully then sort of the, the building that comes out of that isn't so sort of postmodernly, you know, want to look like something, you know, from the culture and, you know, of the, but, but it sort of more logically does it, right? So not just on the surface, I want to look like why is the Hawaiian term for water. Mm -hmm. And so that's the name, you know, of that, of that glazed tower we shot at the building, but make a building that really uses water and hopefully in multiple ways we can generate our irrigation, maybe our gray water and, and, and other things. And as an aside effect, you got your whole interior envelope basically sprinklered, right? No, that would be cool. I was just thinking, well, you make it through that water curtain and you're safe. Yeah. You just got wet. You can't catch on fire. It, exactly. It's going to stop whatever's exactly. chasing you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So let's go down to the you know ground a little bit because these are all great visions, but they're supported already by something you came up with, and we start with the next table and go through the couple. And please explain what that is. So okay, please. so uh, I'm not going to take uh, credit. This was started by uh, Mr. Sam Danaway, who is um, one of our senior fire protection engineers mm -hmm. in the state of Hawaii. He did work with me and some other members of the Residential Fire Safety Advisory uh, committee that was formed at the urging of the city council and we looked at well how could you decide if an uh, existing high-rise building was safe it's mm -hmm. a, really a problem across the whole country we put up high-rises back in the last century in Hawaii really from the 50s 60s on and the big tall buildings and they're staying there mm -hmm. and then we have a big fire like the Marco Polo or mm -hmm. the interstate building mm -hmm. etc and how could people know if they're safe? So mm -hmm. we made an evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first page, on this table one, we looked at, the first thing you gotta look at is people's ability to get themselves out. Mm -hmm. Are they fast? Are they a little slower? Mm -hmm. Do they need assistance? Mm -hmm. And, um, or can they not move themselves? Yeah. Now that's pretty extreme. That's like a hospital, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's where this idea came from. This rating was developed so you could mm -hmm. figure out if a hospital is safe and yeah. we're really looking at the occupants who live there and the firefighters who come to rescue them mm -hmm. so you can input some scores mm -hmm. the next thing we're looking at is the occupant load and that means how many people live on each zone or mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. floor if you're a skinny building you got four units mm -hmm. you might only have 12 or 15 mm -hmm. but if you're a big building like the marco polo that mm -hmm. we showed earlier mm -hmm. you might have 50 or more yeah. people some uh, asian countries might have hundreds of people mm -hmm. on that floor and mm -hmm. that's a uh, that's a challenge and uh, lastly we looked at where the fire might occur and this is really height mm -hmm. you're going to see this in another a place on the on the following slide we're looking at where the fire would take place and the higher the building the harder it is to uh, work imagine mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. elevator's got to take people to the top and if the elevator fails firefighters got to climb mm -hmm. and that's what was mm -hmm. the hardship at the marco polo mm -hmm. firefighters mm -hmm. had to climb up all the floors wearing 100 pounds of gear mm -hmm. several times mm -hmm. and that's what we look at mm -hmm. uh, we had about 17 different fire safety factors mm -hmm. and I'll cover uh, some of them. That's on uh, table 19, page and that's 19. that's on table right? uh, 19. Oh, mm -hmm. I can even oh, look one, at yeah. it from here mm -hmm. and uh, kind of go through it. We look at the construction type. Mm -hmm. If a building is fire resistive, mm -hmm. made out of concrete or, or uh, protected steel, it's mm -hmm. less likely mm -hmm. to burn. Now, now the th it's the things inside the buildings that burn, but really you don't want the building to fall down. Mm -hmm. That's important and at what height. The next thing we look at is a uh, interior finish of the corridors and, mm -hmm. and exits. And mm -hmm. we're gonna say, 
you have something that is listed, mm -hmm. carpet and paint, mm -hmm. it won't let flame spread quickly. And which okay. we avoid in Primitiva purposely. Right, right. and you mm -hmm. avoid in Primitiva. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's worse when you have an interior enclosed place. So we you're going to hear this a few times from exactly. me because you want smoke and smoke and fire to dissipate. You want water to put out smoke mm -hmm, and fire. Mm -hmm. You want air and wind mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. put out smoke and fire. You don't want yeah. to collect it and let it build we up. Love so that. that's the same thing with uh, corridor walls and unit separation. So mm -hmm. of course, if you got concrete between units and mm -hmm. corridors, mm -hmm. well, that's going to stop fire mm -hmm, mm -hmm. longer than drywall will, but solid wood's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. If you've got holes through that, mm -hmm you've got a problem. Yep. Or if you decided to lacquer a nice bamboo panel mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. something you picked up to the hardware store, mm -hmm. that's not good. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are the doors to the corner. Yeah. This is very, very important in any high-rise building. You gotta have a solid door that stays closed. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that means you, you need to have a closer mm -hmm. that will automatically mm -hmm. Close it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that helps spread a fire faster mm -hmm. than open doors, either mm -hmm. to a corridor or going out to the stairwell. Those are all meant to be closed. Absolutely. Um, exit access. The first thing that firefighters look for when they check a building is how do you get out? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, the longer the way that you have to get out, the mm -hmm. tougher. And mm -hmm. so you don't want any problems with the the way out. You want it clear and you want mm -hmm. it short as mm -hmm. possible. Uh, later on, we'll talk about lighting. You want it lighted, you want mm -hmm. to know the way to go. Uh, vertical openings are something that everybody doesn't always think of, but but plumbing chases or uh, other construction that was left unsealed mm -hmm. can leave holes between floors. Absolutely. If that is not sealed up, and that's what the elevator shaft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the stairwell is, of course, too. And that's why it's very important that they mm -hmm. are separated mm -hmm. from the rest of the building. So absolutely. It's, and, it must be sealed up mm -hmm. tight. Okay. Absolutely. And that's uh, we're unfortunately getting to the end of the show, although I could listen to you, you know, much longer. Yeah. And that's the exciting part of that. We can make this, uh, it's, a, it's an Excel sheet, so we can make this available, yeah. right? And it's available because it's intended to be used for people. So since we run out of time, can we have the last picture? Because I want to thank you again for having been here. And I also want to thank you already for being with me tomorrow again. Right? You yeah. going to visit us? Yeah, I sure will. I'll be, I'll be there. I'm going to put in a plug for fire sprinklers. Mm -hmm. They're really a good thing. And they can be beautiful. You don't have to hide them. I'll probably be telling the doctoral students about that tomorrow. Not and, to forget them. I'm looking forward and, to seeing and, you. That first sketch, which we saw they were already in there, that was when Les Campers, our buddy, came in and basically did the first class. And now the students are so excited to present to you where they are and get your great input. So thank you again so much, Socrates. I really appreciate it, all your support. And being this great teamwork of Easy Breezy, you know, human, humane, inclusive, planet and people-friendly architecture on the island, that's so much appreciated. You're a great, great inspiration great. and motivation. Thank you. We're all a community together. We live in a place that's based on aloha. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, if we all aloha each other, then we'll be in an aloha community. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. And see you guys next week back uh, with DeSoto Brown. We're talking about extendedly about what we were talking about. It's going to be uh, tactical, um, tectonic um, decisions on the island, how we build. And until then, uh, please stay cool like uh, Chief Sock. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>